were given a three-phase transformer, no, sorry, three-phase circuit. Let's say if it's a delta-connected circuit, um, or let's say a star-connected circuit, you might have uh, a certain load voltage. So let's say this is the load, um, and this is the line-to-line -line voltage. And um, you, you should be able to um, figure out that this is the phase voltage and the relationship between these two, the line-to-line -line voltage is root three times the phase voltage. So that's very important. You should know that by now. Um, and then if you have a certain line current, um, you can write the apparent power for this whole thing. The S um, will be root three times V line-to-line -line I line. That's the apparent power. And um, if you know, so this is just the magnitude. This is the magnitudes. And then if you know the power factor, let's say if, if this load is characterized as having, let's say, for example, a lagging power factor, um, let's say cos phi, um, then your real power will be root 3, V line to line, um, I line cos phi. And um, that's this multiplied by power factor. And then the reactive power will be root 3, V line to line, um, I line sine phi. Um, and then the apparent power will be the um, squared of real power plus the squared of reactive power. So that this that relationship as well. Mm. And also the complex power relationship. So if you have a certain reactive um, phase uh, quantity here for the line current, you can write the complex power S as um, root 3 V line to line uh, I line uh, conjugate. So this is a complex calculation, which will give you uh, P plus J Q um, eventually. Um, so that's the power uh, equations. And also, you should be able to um, apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to this kind of circuit. So let's say um, you have this uh, circuit. Let's say, for example, if you were to have a line impedance as well, um, let's say something like this. This is just a star connected load with a line impedance um, and this is the load then uh, you should be able to draw the equivalent single phase circuit which is just this bit here with the line impedance the load and the per phase voltage here that's being supplied um, at this from this side and then um, this is the single phase equivalent and then this you can use this to figure out the line currents um, in this circuit and how this relates to the three phase circuit and how we multiply it by <clears throat> three times to get the power and root three times to figure out the line to line voltages and so on. <clears throat> mm. And then if you were to have a delta connected load here, um, then you should apply the star delta transformation and then convert it to, um, let's say, something like this. If you were to have a delta connected load here, then you should be able to convert this to a star equivalent, and then you'll get a representation similar to this. And this is the star load. And then, let's say, this is the delta connected load, and then you'll have something here as such. So if you look at the formula sheet, um, you'll have certain information provided. So this is the formula sheet you'll be given. Um, so here you have the star, del, uh, star connected load and then the delta connected load. And the star delta transformation, you can figure that out from this information. So um, the delta equivalent will be, sorry, star equivalent will be the delta divided by three. Um, so then this will be Z delta divided by three. That's from this one here.
and then from this you'll be able to figure out the uh, line current, this uh, feeding the delta load. So this is the delta connected load line current. I'll call it I2, I line current 2, and this is the I line current 1. Uh, so that corresponds to these two currents, and then you can figure out the branch current. So this is what we call the branch current. So the relationship between these two as well. So if you consider the power consumed, it will be the, um, three times the line-to-line -line voltage, I delta, the, that's the apparent power. And then if you consider the circuit, uh, it will be root three times uh, V line-to-line, -line, IL2. So then you can cancel off this, and then you, you can see the relationship between the line current. The second line current is root 3 times I delta. So the root 3 cancels off here. So then um, you can figure out I delta. That's the this line current divided by root 3 gives you the branch current in that uh, branch. Um, so that kind of calculation, <coughs> um, that's the first question. Um, Um, any questions on that, those concepts? Um, so I'll uh, go through the first question. Um, it says a balanced delta connected load is energized through a feeder with a per phase series impedance that's given. Um, three phase voltage source. The load draws 14.4. Uh, kilowatt um, at a lagging power factor of 0.866, um, such that the line, line voltage at the load uh, of the feeder is 400 volts. Uh, calculate the magnitude of the line uh, of the current flowing in the delta load elements and also in the feeder supply line. Mm, so if you have um, a delta connected load, Um, and this is being fed by a line having a certain impedance. So this, it's fed by a line here, which has a per phase impedance of um, this value, Z line. And this particular load consumes 14.4 um, kilowatt at a lagging power factor of um, 0.88. Sorry, 866 lagging. Um, and we are given the load voltage, um, the line to line voltage at the load end of the feeder. So that's this uh, side. The voltage is given as 400 volts here. <coughs> um, so, first part is to figure out the line, um, figure out the magnitude of the current flowing in the delta load elements. That's the, the branch current here. So as we wrote down here, you can write uh, the re, uh, real power consumed by the total load is given by root 3 times, uh, no, we, we can write it as um, the line to line I delta cos phi for one of these elements. And then you have three such elements, so then that will be 3 times I line to line times the delta current gives you real power. And this is uh, this particular value here, 14.4 kilowatt. <coughs> um, so you can find I delta. That will be the power divided by V line, uh, sorry, 3 times line to line cos phi. So that will be 14,400 uh, watt divided by 3 times 400 times uh, 0.866 gives you the uh, delta branch current. So that's 13.86 um, amperes. That's the delta branch current. <clears throat> um, so once you know that, 
we can um, apply this kind of relationship and then find the line current. So that's, let's say, IL line current um, is root 3 times this. So that's root 3 times 13.86 gives you uh, 24 amperes uh, line current. So this is for part A. And then second part of that question, um, you are asked to determine the magnitude of the voltage at the sending end of the feeder. So we want to find the, this is the sending end, we want to find the voltage at this side. So that's the voltage, uh, let's say sending end. Mm -hmm. So this, this side we can convert it to a star equivalent. So let's say, um, if you draw the per phase equivalent, you'll have uh, the line impedance, and then you have a per phase voltage here, uh, which is uh, 400 over root 3. So you have 400 over root 3 voltage per phase equivalent, and then this is the sending end per phase voltage. I'll call it as a V1, for example, and this is the line uh, impedance, and then we found the current, that's I line, <clears throat> and um, we know the power factor that's uh, lagging by 0.866. So I line, we can write it as 24 uh, minus uh, cos inverse of 0.866. That's uh, minus 30 degrees, that's the current. <clears throat> so we have this um, value here. So it's a matter of applying the Kirchhoff's voltage law to this loop. So you have, um, let's say I'll call this V2. Um, V1 is equal to the um, receiving end voltage plus the voltage drop across the line impedance. So it will be V2 plus um, Z line times I line. The phasor equation, um, so this, this is our reference. So we, we assume this receiving end voltage is at phase angle zero, so that's what the power factor is characterized from. So with respect to this particular voltage, 400 zero phase angle, this is lagging by minus 30. So we can write that as uh, 400 over root three zero, that's the sending, uh, receiving end voltage, plus um, the impedance is given uh, as 0.22 plus J 0.34 ohm per phase, so that will be 0 0.22 plus J, 0 0.34 uh, times uh, the line current, which is 24 minus 30. So we have 239.6, uh, 1.058 volts. Um, that's your um, source voltage. Um, and the, this line-to-line -line magnitude of the source uh, voltage will be root 3 times uh, 239.6. So that will be uh, 415 volts uh, sending end voltage. Um, and the other part of the question, um, a Y-connected capacitor bank is connected across the supply at the source end of the feeder so that uh, so as to improve the power factor of, from the perspective of the source. Um, so that means uh, here you're connecting a capacitor 
in part C, you have um, this impedance, and you're connecting a capacitor here. Uh, determine the capacitor value required to improve the power factor of the feeder load combination to 0.95 lagging power factor. <clears throat> so you have a certain power factor that's consumed by the load, so sorry, a certain reactive power consumed by the load, um, and then a certain reactive power is consumed by the, um, the feeder as well. So we want to have this capacitor size such, such that <clears throat> the overall feeder and the load combination is at 0.95 lagging power factor. So uh, in this case, the real power uh, compared with the earlier case and the new case, the real power remains constant. The real power doesn't change. So here, um, the load consumes 14.4 uh, kilowatt real power. So P load is 14.4 uh, kilowatt. And the cable, um, cable reactive power, P cable, uh, sorry, real power will be I squared R. Um, so we found I, that's uh, 24. And um, the resistance of the cable is the real part of the uh, this impedance, that's 0.22. So that will be 0 0.22 squared, uh, sorry, 24 squared. And this is the per phase power. That's the uh, real power conceived in one line. So the total is three times that. So that will be uh, 380.16 um, kilowatt. And the uh, reactive power of the load, um, we can find that. So that will be apparent power. And that will be uh, the real power divided by reactive power, 0.866. Um, squared minus 14.4 squared. Square root gives you the reactive power of the load. So that's 14.4 divided by 866. So that will be uh, 21.99 uh, kilo volt ampere reactive. That will be the reactive power of the load. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, this turns out to be 8.3148 uh, kilovolt ampere reactive. And the reactive power of the cable will be uh, three times um, the reactance, which is 0.34. That's the re imaginary part of the uh, cable, 0.34 uh, times 24 squared. That's uh, 587.52 uh, volt ampere reactive. So these are the uh, real power and rea reactive power of the load and the cable. Mm. So we want to have uh, the total real power. Uh, that's the sum of these two components. 14.4 uh, plus 0 0.38. So that will be like 14.78 uh, kilowatt. That's the total uh, real power. And then if we were to have um, like 0.95 power factor, uh, then you can find the reactive power of the, uh, the load and the capacitor, the combination. So the total um, reactive power 
which includes the capacitor plus the uh, load plus the cable. Uh, we can find this value from uh, these two information. So uh, the apparent power under this condition, S total, will be 14.78 divided by 0.95. So that will be 15.55 uh, kilovolt ampere. And then the Q total will be uh, this, this value squared minus the real power squared, square root. So this will be the total reactive power of the capacitor and the, um, all the reactive power supplied by the load. So that turns out to be 4.8326 uh, kilo volt ampere reactive. So then um, you have these two values for the uh, load and the cable, but then um, this is higher. So the capacitor consumes part of the, or supplies part of the reactive power and cancels out it, cancels it out a little. So we can say uh, the total reactive power, that's 4.8326. 8326 equals the capacitor reactive power plus the sum of these two components which we calculated here. So that will be 8.3148 plus um, 0.587. And then Q capacitor will be uh, minus Four point zero um, seven um, kilovolt ampere reactive. So that's the uh, reactive power that the capacitor bank has to provide. Um, and then you are supposed to find the capacitor value. Uh, so it's a star connected or Y connected capacitor bank. So that means uh, we can write Q uh, capacitor as three times the phase voltage squared divided by XC. Or you can also write this as uh, three V line to line squared over X C as well. Um, so this will be. So we are just interested in the magnitude there, um, which this will be 4.07 kilovolt ampere reactive. So we want to find the reactance, or we can f say this is um, omega C. And then that will be V line to line squared uh, omega C is equal to this particular value, um, volt ampere reactive. The line to line voltage, uh, that's the value we calculated earlier. The source is at 415 volts line to line. So the capacitor will be this particular reactive power value divided by the line to line voltage uh, squared times 2 pi uh, 50, that's the omega. So that turns out to be uh, like 7.522 uh, 10 to the power minus 5 or um, 75.22 microfarad uh, capacitance. Mm. And then uh, last part of that question. Uh, Calculate the overall power factor of the feeder load combination if the capacitor bank is accidentally connected in delta rather than Y configuration. So um, if you were to connect the capacitor bank in uh, Y, uh, sorry, delta, then the voltage here would be uh, root three times higher. So that will effectively give you three times more reactive power. So. Part D, um, if uh, the C is connected in delta, uh, the Q capacitor bank will be uh, three times this value. So it will have three times the 4.07 kilo volt ampere reactive. 
So then it will provide, uh, like this is negative, so negative 12.21 kilo volt ampere reactive. So if you were to connect the capacitor bank delta, it will provide more reactive power. Um, and then the total reactive power seen by the supply will be this plus the other two components of the um, system. So that will be minus 12.21 plus um, these two values we wrote here. So that turns out to be um, 8.314 plus 0 0.587. So that's like 8.901, which turns out to be um, minus 3.301 um, uh, kilo volt ampere reactive. So the supply will need to uh, provide this much of reactive power. The real power remains the same <coughs> that we calculated here. That's 14.78. Uh, so then uh, the apparent power will be uh, squared and square root value of these two components. So that will be 14.78 squared plus 3.301 squared square root. Uh, which will be 15.145 uh, kilo volt ampere, and then the power factor will be the ratio between these two. So power factor will be 14.78 divided by 15.145. So that'll be 0 0.976. So that question covers uh, most of the AC circuit theory calculation concepts. Um, um, any questions on that? So the sample test is a bit more extensive. Uh, the actual exam is not this extensive. It's, it's just for revision. Mm. So the second, I'll move on to the second question. Um, that's fairly straightforward. Um, the um, open circuit test and short circuit tests of um, single phase transformers. So um, if we review that, you, um, you have the equivalent circuit. So we do two tests. One is the open circuit test, uh, where we leave this open circuit, and then that allows us to neglect this part of the uh, circuit. And then you are applying a certain voltage here, let's say phase voltage. Uh, you have the core loss resistance, uh, the magnetizing reactance. Uh, the real power under that operating condition is consumed by this particular element. So the P open circuit value will be V per uh, phase voltage squared R naught. So mind that if it's a three phase transformer, you have to multiply by three. Um, and then Q. Uh, sorry, S open circuit will be the line current, uh, or open circuit line current times the voltage, the open circuit voltage, this, and then uh, from this you'll be able to figure out the reactive power Q open circuit will be the S open circuit squared minus P open circuit squared square root gives you the reactive power. So that corresponds to the um, magnetizing reactance. So Q open circuit will be the phase voltage squared divided by X naught. So, uh, this is the same as open circuit voltage as well. So that's the open circuit 
test and the short circuit test. So effectively, we uh, short circuit here. And that results in a high current in this path. We neglect the shunt, uh, shunt circuit. And then we, that fi we can figure out the equivalent circuit, uh, copper loss resistance, and the um, leakage reactance from that test. So that will give you a P short circuit will be um, the line current. Uh, this is the I short circuit current. Squared R equivalent gives you the real power measurement under the short circuit test. <clears throat> and um, reactive power will correspond to I short circuit squared X equivalent. And then the applied voltage times um, short circuit current gives you the apparent power. So that's uh, very briefly, that's the concept of the short circuit test and the open circuit test. <clears throat> and then um, you can also find um, oper operating conditions uh, depending on uh, this, the application of Kirchhoff's voltage law to this loop. So if you have, um, let's say, a certain voltage here, that's the secondary voltage. And then we refer it to the primary side. So this is this we call the primary referred secondary voltage. Uh, and let's say this is the um, primary terminal voltage. We can write uh, the primary terminal voltage is equal to the sec primary referred secondary voltage plus um, J R E Q plus um, sorry R E Q plus J X E Q times I um, two. This is the current in the I2 branch. And um, this equation, we can simplify it a little um, in the formula sheet. If you recall, we have uh, this particular equation. So if we don't know uh, the primary voltage uh, and as phasor, we can simplify it, assuming that the phase angle is really small, and then that's this relationship here. Um, we can write V1 cos delta is equal to V2 plus um, I2 uh, R EQ cos phi plus um, X EQ I uh, 2 uh, sine phi. This gives you an approximate approximation, uh, and we assume this is um, E close to one, so that's that's the approximation. Um, so if I move on to the second question, um, a single phase, um, nineteen point eight kilo. Volt ampere 440 to 20 uh, 60 hertz transformer has the following circuit parameters based on the approximate equivalent circuit refers uh, referred to the high voltage side winding. Uh, so that means um, everything's on the 4, 440 volt side, the high voltage side. Um, determine the primary side current and power measurements that would result is if the transformer were subject to an open circuit test at rated primary volts. Um, so question two, everything's referred to the primary side or, or the high voltage side. So then your R equivalent, um, X equivalent, and the uh, co loss resistance and the magnetizing reactance are on the four, 440 volt side. This is the 440 volt side. And the other side, that's the 220 volt side here, and this is given as um, X naught 136 uh, magnetizing reactance, and the core loss resistance is 220, and the R equivalent is 0 0.15, the leakage reactance is 0 0.24. Um, so if you were, so the first part, if you were to supply the primary side, um, with its rated voltage, so that means it's um, 440. So if we supply this with 440 volts, what would 
be the real power measurement and um, current that you would see uh, for this that open circuit test. So that means this is open circuited, then there's no current flow in this part that's uh, open circuited. So the current here is mainly due to these two components. So then we can find the real power measurement that will be B squared over R naught. That will be 440 squared divided by 220. Um, gives you 880 watt. And the reactive power will be V squared divided by X naught. That will be 440 squared divided by 136. So that will be 143.5 volt ampere reactive. Um, so this is one measurement. You'll see uh, 880 watt. That's the real power measurement. We also need to figure out the current that you would expect uh, when you feed it at 440. Uh, so to, to do that, we need to find the re, uh, apparent power. So the apparent power is given by um, P squared plus Q squared square root. So that will be 880 squared plus 1423.5 squared. This gives you the apparent power. which is um, 1673.5 uh, volt ampere. That's the apparent power. And then to find current, you divide this by the voltage. So I will be S divided by voltage. So mind that this is for a single phase uh, circuit. If, you, if you're dealing with three phase circuits, you'll have to mind the root three there. Um, so that's 673.5 divided by 440 gives you 3.8 amperes. Uh, that's the line current for the open circuit test. So that's part A and part B. Uh, de, uh, part B is to determine the primary side voltage and power measurements that would result if the transformer was subject to a short circuit test at the rate of primary current. So um, we short circuit test, we neglect the shunt branch here. So then you have uh, these, just we assume that just these two elements. And then um, this side, it's short-circuited. Um, effectively, that's like a short circuit on this side. And then we increase this voltage uh, until you have uh, rated current flow on the primary. So this current, the short circuit current, is at its rated current. The transformer rating is given as 19.8 um, kilovolt amperes. So I short circuit current, yeah, we've increased this voltage. Um, until you have rated current, so that the rated current will be the apparent power divided by uh, the rated power divided by the voltage for 40. So you have 45 amperes rated current on the primary, uh, but then this voltage is not the rated voltage. We've short circuited it here, so this voltage will be really low. Um, so now we have the current. Um, we, we know this is uh, 0 0.15, and this is 0 0.24 um, reactants. So we can find the real power and reactive power associated with this test. So P short circuit uh, will be I squared R here. So that will be I squared R EQ, uh, which is 45 squared times 0 0.15. So we have 303.75 uh, watt um, 
power, um, re real power measurement. And then um, reactive power, Q short circuit will be I squared X EQ, which is uh, 45 squared times 0 0.424. which is uh, 486 volt ampere reactive. So the apparent power will be um, square, square root uh, sum of these two values. So that will be 303.75 squared plus 486 squared. Square root gives you the apparent power. which is 573.1 volt amperes. So then um, you are feeding this amount of current to the circuit, and it, the overall it's consuming this amount of apparent power, so then you can figure out what the voltage has to be. So S short circuit will be the short circuit current times the short circuit, uh, sorry, voltage times current. Um, we have these two values. Um, we can figure out the voltage under that operating condition, which is this value, apparent power divided by the current, which is 45, gives you 12.7 uh, volts. So uh, see, you can note that this is really low current. When it's short-circuited, it will conduct the rated current at really low voltage. Um, and then uh, second part of that, uh, calculate the primary side voltage required to de um, deliver the rated secondary current at a rated secondary voltage for a 0.8 leading power factor condition. Mm. So that means um, you have this circuit We need to find the primary voltage, that's V1. Um, and then this is feeding the rated current on the secondary side at a rated secondary voltage. So the rated secondary voltage is um, 220. That means the primary referred uh, voltage here will be um, 440 because of the turns ratio relationship. V2, um, V2. So for, uh, 440, and you have rated current here, so that means you have rated current here as well. So I2 um, prime um, will be 45, which we calculated before, and this is at a leading power factor uh, of 0.8. So we can, um, we need to find this particular voltage. Mm. So we can write this as a phasor quantity, uh, so that will be 45 and uh, power factor 0.8, that's cross inverse 0.8 will be 36.87 uh, amperes. So this is a positive angle because it says it's a leading power factor. Uh, this is our reference, this is at zero and V2 is at zero reference as well. We need to find V1, so then we need to figure out this particular voltage drop plus the v, uh, V2 prime. So V1 will be V2 prime um, plus J um, X EQ plus R EQ times I2 prime. That's the Kirchhoff's voltage law to this loop. Um, you could use the other uh, equation as well, either one would give you roughly a similar result. Um, if you use this equation, um, you'll have V1, V2 prime, that's 440, um, and this will be um, 0.15 plus J, 0.24, that's the uh, transformer uh, reactance here, and the current as 45, 36.87.
So this gives you the v, uh, primary terminal voltage. So the, you have 439.1 uh, 1.65 volts. So if you um, apply the other equation, you would get a, a value close to that as well. It'll, it won't be exactly the same, but then it'll be close enough. Um, and then Last part of that question, calculate the transformer efficiency for the loading condition described in part 2C. So uh, transformer efficiency will be uh, the ratio between output power divided by uh, input power um, as percentage. So output power, um, we, we are, we, we've been given that the secondary is at uh, rated voltage and rated um, current, so the output power, apparent power, um, will be rated value, 19.8 kilovolt amperes. But then the real power output, P out, is this multiplied by power factor, so 19.8 times um, 0 0.8. So we have 15. Point um, 84 uh, kilowatt output power. Um, so we need to find the uh, coal losses and copper losses. So copper losses um, are the I squared R. So I, we, if that's 45, so we already calculated uh, the short circuit uh, power loss here, so that's the same value. If it's 45 amperes, the copper losses is the same. So from that we can write that's 303.75 watt copper losses. And the coal losses, um, that's, we need to calculate that again. That's um, 439.1 squared over R naught, which is um, given as 220. That will be 876.4 watt um, core losses. <clears throat> so uh, the input power is the sum of uh, the output power plus the core, all the losses. So then you'll have this plus 303.75 gives you 17.5. Um, or two uh, kilowatt uh, input power, and the ratio between the output power and um, input power will give you the efficiency. Um, so that will be ninety three six percent um, efficiency. So that's the second question. Any um, issues with that? Everything is understood, right? So I think we are running out of time, so I'll, I'll um, go through probably the 
a couple of questions. I might have to miss one question. Um, so I'll do the sixth one, which everyone struggles with. The sixth question is uh, the three-phase transformer question. This one. Um, So um, you have this arrangement, uh, delta star transformer. So it says the uh, figure one uh, shows the circuit diagram of a 150 kVA 6.6, .6, uh, 415 three-phase delta Y transformer energized from 6.6 .6 kilovolt line to line. So that's um, this side uh, and supplies through a feeder with the per-phase series reactants of three ohm, so that's individual um, reactances, or the line reactance is three ohm. The per phase equivalent series impedance of the transformer, referred to the high voltage side uh, winding is uh, this value that's given. The transformer is loaded uh, so that it supplies rated secondary current at a lagging power factor of 0.8. So this side, um, you have a load and um, it supplies rated secondary current at lagging power factor of 0.8. Uh, sketch the per phase equivalent circuit for this system with the source and all the impedances referred to the secondary side of the transformer. So this is the primary. Uh, we want to move everything to the secondary side. Um, so this is given as three, um, and then the transformer uh, impedance refer to the high voltage side. So this side it's 6.6 .6 kilovolt. That's the high voltage side, and this side it's the 415 volt side. So the transformer impedance refer to the high voltage side. That means uh, one of these uh, elements has the impedance of uh, this value that's um, within the delta branch. So you want to refer this to the other side. So to do that, we need to figure out the turns ratio. So this uh, this rating refers to the line-to-line um, -line voltage. So if you look at the um, delta star transformer, you have the primary and the secondary. Uh, this is. Uh, rated at 6.6 .6 kilovolt. So that's the line to line voltage there, that's 6.6 .6 kilovolt. And this side uh, is rated at 415 volts. So um, we are interested in the turns ratio between one of these two uh, coupled windings. Um, so this is also rated at 6.6 6, uh, 6 .6 kilovolt. But the rating of this winding will be 415 divided by root 3. So the turns ratio is between uh, the rating of this coil and this coil here. So we can write, let's say, A to 1 uh, turns ratio. So A will be uh, 6,600 divided by 415 over root 3. Uh, so that will give you the turns ratio. That will be a 27.54 um, turns ratio. So the high voltage side has an um, impedance. Uh, so let's say the transform impedance here is given as um, 12 plus J16. And then you also have this particular impedance here, which is the line impedance of 3 ohm as well on each, all, all the lines. Um, so now if we convert this to a star equivalent, and then, then you'll be able to add this with the um, transform impedance. So again, uh, back to the delta star transformation.
so here, um, so the delta equivalent will be uh, three times the star, and the star equivalent will be one third of one third of the delta um, equivalent impedance. So if we transform this impedance to a star, you'll have, um, let's say, an equivalent branch here, and the transform impedance that will be this value divided by 3. And then in series with that, you have 3 ohm as well. So the total line impedance and the transform impedance, let's say, I'll call it the total, let's say, secondary um, impedance, will be uh, 3. J3 plus uh, this particular impedance uh, divided by 3. This is the transform impedance. We've converted it to a star and then added it with 3 here. That's the line impedance. But then uh, in order to convert, uh, transfer it to the secondary, we need to again uh, convert it to a delta. Then only the turns ratio applies. So then again, we multiply everything by 3 as well. So um, Three times the secondary impedance will be then J9 here. That's three times three plus 12 plus J16. So then you'll have 12 plus J25. Um, that's still on the primary side. So that's effectively we move the. Um, line impedance into the delta branch. So then um, from the previous case uh, to the new case, we have the delta branch of the tra uh, transformer and the impedances, we move them into the uh, these branches. And then this is the value we calculated before, which is 12 plus uh, J25. And then you have this the star equivalent as well. And then we can move this to the secondary side. And then for that, we, we have a turns ratio. Uh, we need to uh, divide by the turns ratio squared. So then um, this, we transform it. We move the impedance to the secondary side. So then your impedance will be here. Um, so these impedances are uh, the 12 plus J25, but now um, it's on the low voltage side. Uh, so then you need to divide it by the turns ratio squared. So effectively, um, you can figure that out. Let's say if it's a high voltage side, um, the impedances are high. In the low voltage side, the impedances have to be low. So this you need to divide this by... 27.54 uh, squared. So that, that will be your effective impedance of the line and the transformer referred to the secondary side. Um, so the question is to draw the per phase equivalent machine connected to an fi uh, infinite bus. Um, so part A of that question. Um, you have the transformer. This is connected to an infinite bus. Oh, no, sorry, this is, that's the another question. Uh, sorry, so, uh, six, part 6A. Six uh, sketch the per phase equivalent circuit of this system with the source and all impedances refer to the secondary side of the transformer. So then um, we have we've referred everything to the secondary side. Mm, and then this is 12, uh, this value here, which we'll write it as um, So this will be 0 0.0158 plus J, um, 0 
two nine. So that will be the total impedance on the secondary side. And then this is being fed by a certain source. Um, and the per phase voltage will be 6.6 .6 over root 3 uh, kilovolt on that side. And um, this, is, this has a certain load. That's the per phase equivalent uh, load of that. Um, so, part B, uh, calculate the magnitude of the line-to-line -line voltage developed across the load using the equivalent circuit determined in part 1. So, here you are having 6.6 .6 over root 3, so you can then refer it to the secondary side. Uh, this voltage will be 6.6 um, .6 .6 over root 3 uh, divided by um, 27.54 gives you um, no sorry so this one um, here it's uh, like 6.6 .6. this is the line to line voltage so in the equivalent circuit we don't divide this by root 3 this is the line to line voltage appearing across that uh, coil itself and the turns ratio is a to 1 uh, if you have 6.6 .6 here you have uh, 415 volts on the other side um, and then this load is feeding um, a rated line current it says uh, the load supplies rated secondary current at lagging power factor of 0.8 so then we can determine the line current, let's say I2, that's the secondary current. Um, then uh, you have this particular voltage, and then you can subtract, apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to determine the uh, voltage at this point here. Um, so let's, uh, here it says it's a 150 kVA transformer, so then you can figure out the rated secondary current. So I2 uh, rated will be uh, the rated power divided by the root 3 times the line to line uh, secondary rated voltage because it's a star connected system on the secondary. So then that will be 150 uh, kilovolt divided, uh, sorry, kilovolt ampere divided by root 3 times 415. This gives you the rated current on the secondary side. So that will be uh, 208.7 uh, amperes. That's the rated current magnitude. So now um, you have this particular uh, arrangement um, where you have a certain current, then this is lagging by, uh, so the cos phi value is, that's um, the power factor 0 0.8, and the sine phi value will be 1 minus uh, 0 0.8 squared square root, so that will be, um, Point 0.6. So then uh, you can you you can apply the that approximation where we assume that the phase angle of this, let's say this is delta, and then you assume this is really small. So then um, you can write that um, using the formula in the formula sheet, which is. Um, So it's basically um, you have a certain voltage, um, a certain element with R and X, and then you have a certain voltage here, 
and uh, let's say V1, this has a face angle, and then this is V2. So um, you have a certain voltage drop here, so we can write V1 delta equals V2 plus um, R plus Jx times the current. That's the um, nominal Kirchhoff's voltage law. But then we uh, do an approximation where we say V1 magnitude is equal to V2 magnitude plus R um, cos phi I magnitude plus J uh, X sine phi I magnitude, um, assuming that this cos phi is a lagging power factor. So that's the assumption. Um, so if you apply that, you'll be able to figure out the um, voltage, uh, this particular voltage. So here we, we have that as uh, 415. Um, over root 3, and then this is the one we want to find. R and X, we found that before. Uh, cos phi and sine phi, we have it here. Um, and if you substitute everything, you'll have V2 magnitude will be uh, 415 over root 3 minus uh, the expression here. So R is 0 0.0158, cos phi is uh, 0.8. Uh, plus uh, x is 0 0.0329 and 0 0.6 um, times the current, which is uh, 208.7. So this whole thing multiplied by 208.7 gives you the voltage at the load end. So this whole thing turns out to be um, 6.75 volts, and this 415 over root 3 turns out to be uh, 239.6 minus this value gives you the V2 um, per phase voltage. So that will be 232.87 volts. And the line-to-line -line voltage um, uh, will be uh, this multiplied by root 3, which is uh, 403.3 volts um, at the load terminal. third part of that question, calculate the transformer efficiency for this loading condition. So um, if you consider this circuit, uh, the only losses that we have are due to the uh, copper losses, that's due to this um, R element here. So the output power here, we can find that uh, for part C, P out, uh, that's um, this particular voltage times current times power factor. So that's uh, root 3 times V2 uh, line to line uh, times I line current times uh, the power factor. That's the power output of the system. So that will be root 3 times this particular voltage uh, times line current. We found that before uh, that's 2087 and the power factor is given as 0.8. So this is the output power. So that's um, so that's in kilowatt. Um, and then we can find the losses. That's mainly we don't we only have the core loss, uh, copper loss information. Uh, so the copper losses will be um, 3 times I squared R um, 
So that's 3 times uh, 208.7 squared times the resistance, which we calculated here. That's the uh, 0 0.0158 value. So we have uh, like 2.05 um, kilowatt uh, copper losses. So then the input power is the sum of these two. So we can write efficiency as um, the output power, that's uh, this, divided by uh, the same value plus uh, 2.05. This gives you the out, uh, input power divided by output power. which is 98.27% uh, um, efficiency. Um, any questions on that? Um, so final part of that question is to sketch the phase diagram for this transformer, showing the primary and secondary side phase and line-to-line -line voltages, and hence determine the phase shift developed across the primary and secondary side of the transformer. Um, so may, may it, you ask to draw only the line to, uh, voltages. Um, so if you look at this, um, we have Let's say if you start off in the secondary side, you have a voltage um, phaser, something like this. So that's VAN, uh, VBN, and VCN. That's your um, uh, VCN. That's your secondary side voltage phaser diagram. Um, and then, so that's if you look at this particular coil. The voltage across that coil has to be in phase with the voltage across the corresponding um, co coil on this primary side. So that's VAB. VAB is in phase with this. So I'll write, I'll draw VAB here. VAB. That's in phase with the VAN. And if you look at the, uh, this, these two coils are coupled together. So VBN is in phase with VBC. So uh, here you have this VBC that's in phase with this voltage. And um, similarly, you have VCA uh, uh, that's in phase with VCN. And then if you um, resolve this, the perfect, um, we want to find the line-to-line -line voltages. So the line-to-line -line voltages here are along these uh, paths. So this will be your um, VA, or I'll write it VCA, and then this will be your VAB, and this will be the VBC. So um, if you compare the line-to-line -line voltages uh, between these two diagrams, you'll be able to figure out the phase, uh, diff phase difference. So VBC is somewhere here. Uh, and then this voltage is somewhere here, VBC. So the difference between VBC on the secondary side and the primary uh, side uh, gives is given by this. So um, this is in phase with this uh, line. And then um, we want to find the angle between these two. So this is uh, 60 degrees, so it will be 30 degrees, this angle. And then similarly, you'll have the other phasers as well. Um, you'll have uh, VBC here, and then VAB somewhere here, VCA um, somewhere here. This is VAN, sorry, AB and VCA. And similarly, you'll have uh, the corresponding line-to-line -line, um, primary voltage lagging the secondary voltage. 
So this will be somewhere here and the other voltage will be somewhere here. So this will be P um, A B and this will be B C A. These correspond to the primary voltages. The other uh, lowercase ones correspond to the secondary voltages. So here the primary um, primary lags um, lags the secondary by uh, 30 degrees, or uh, if you invert that, the secondary leads the primary by 30 degrees as well. So it's the opposite, or oh, the secondary leads. Uh, primary by uh, 30 degrees. So that's the phase shift between the primary and the secondary. Mm. So that's question six. So um, I'm running out of time, so we have three more questions. That, that's on the um, induction motor, the synchronous generator, and the uh, DC motor. Uh, which one do you think I should go through the remaining time? So I think the same, um, induction machines, we've covered it in detail, so uh, I'll probably do the synchronous generator since you we, uh, we weren't, didn't have much time on synchronous machines. Um, so that's question five, I think, sorry. Um, so synchronous generator question, question four. Um, so for synchronous machines, um, it's fairly easy, uh, one of the easiest questions in the exam. Um, so there are only two, e two main equations that you have to deal with. The, that's the real power equation and the reactive power equation. So the synchronous generator, you have like a equivalent circuit uh, with a certain voltage source, which we call the back EMF or the excitation voltage. And the terminal, you might have a load or might be connected to the grid. You have a terminal voltage here and the excitation voltage here. Uh, this is your reference. That's at phase angle zero. This is the synchronous reactance. So the real power transfer, P, you can write that as, um, so these are all phase, uh, per phase quantities. Um, if you consider the line to line, voltages of excitation voltage, that will be root three times E, and V line to line will be root three times V. You can write P as um, E line to line, V line to line sine delta divided by X, and then Q is E line to line, V line to line cos delta minus V line to line squared divided by X. So these are the two main equations, and also you can apply Kirchhoff's um, voltage law to this loop um, if you have a, it as a generator and you have a current here, um, you have a voltage drop across the synchronous reactance. So then um, you have this particular excitation voltage is the sum of the terminal voltage plus the voltage drop across the synchronous reactance. So then E, you can write that as V plus J excess I. That's the um, Kirchhoff's voltage law. So these three equations you'll be mainly dealing with these three equations. So if I move on to the question four, um, you have a three-phase, four-pole, star-connected cylindrical rotor synchronous generator. It's connected to a 15 kV line-to-line, uh, -line, 50 hertz uh, infinite bus. The synchronous reactance of the generator is given um, 
8 ohm per phase and the excitation voltage of the generator set to um, 8.66 this is line to neutral that's the per phase voltage under these excitation condi uh, conditions the generator achieves a torque angle of 30 degrees the draw, first part is to draw the per phase equivalent circuit representing the machine connected to the infinite bus so that's just drawing this particular circuit so that's I've already drawn that so that this is part A for question 4 uh, this is like connected X, uh, synchronous generator connected to the infinite bus um, sketch the fa phaser diagram for this operating condition showing clearly the grid voltage the excitation voltage um, the stator current and voltage developed across the synchronous reactance so if I put in the values you have 15 kilovolt um, so I'll redraw it again this is the synchronous reactance and then the grid voltage is given as um, 15 kilovolt line to line so that will be 15 over root 3 per phase voltage so that's uh, 8.66 kilovolts um, uh, grid voltage and the excitation voltage is um, 8.66 as well and then it's at 30 degrees um, torque angle and this is your reference zero and uh, you have a synchronous reactance of 8 ohm um, and this is your current so if you apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to this loop um, you can find the current Um, so, for to draw the phaser diagram, you first you don't need to find current. Um, it's just a representation. So, let's say you have a grid voltage. That's your reference. That's at 8.66 kilovolts. This is um, the 8.66 vector or phaser. And then um, this is V, and this is leading by 30 degrees. The excitation voltage. So it's the same um, distance somewhere here at 30 degrees. This is also 8.66. This is um, 30. This is the excitation voltage. So um, if you look at this, you have E equals uh, V plus JXI. So this is V plus JXI. That's here. And then um, in order for this uh, to be here, you need to have like a leading power factor. So that's somewhere here, I guess. I will be here. So this is V and E and this is J, X, I. So this will be your phase diagram. Um, so third part of that question calculate the real and reactive power supplied by the generator to the infinite bus so it's application of these two equations so if we look at re real power um, P equals um, E line to line V line to line sine delta over X so E line to line is um, um, 8.6 six six uh, per phase voltage so that will be root three times um, eight point six six and uh, the line, V line to line is fifteen uh, times sine delta so that's thirty degrees divided by x which is eight so this gives you um, a power quantity so mind that this this is in kilovolts and this is in kilovolts as well so then overall the value you get here it will be like 10 to the power 3 times 10 to the power 3 so it's 10 to the power 6 so then the power value will be a mega watt quantity so you have 14.06 uh, mega watt 
that's the real power value. Um, and then reactive power, Q, will be um, E line line, V line line, cos delta minus V line line squared divided by X. So this will be, uh, so this is 15 as well anyway, so I'll write it as 15 uh, times 15 times cos 30 minus 15 squared divided by 8. So this gives you the reactive power. So which will be minus 3.768 mega volt ampere reactive. That's the reactive power supplied by the generator to the grid. Um, and then finally, uh, part, the last part of that question, determine the power factor of the generator and hence calculate the magnitude of the line current uh, drawn by the infinite bus. So um, it's fairly simple. The uh, apparent power um, is the square, square root of the sum of P and Q. Um, apparent power D, um, S will be P squared plus uh, Q squared square root. So that will be 14.06 squared plus 3.768 squared square root. Which is 14.556 uh, mega volt amperes. And then uh, the power factor is the real power divided by apparent power. So that's 14.06 divided by 14.556, which is 0 0.966 power factor. Um, and then we need to find line current as well. So we can write S equals uh, root 3, the terminal voltage times uh, line current. So the terminal voltage is um, at 15 uh, kilovolts. Um, so I line will be S divided by root 3, V line to line. So here we found the apparent power, so that's 15, sorry, 14.556 divided by root 3 times 15. This is the line to line voltage. This is a mega volt ampere quantity and this is a kilo volt quantity and then the current you get here will be a kilo ampere value. So that turns out to be 0 0.56 um, or 2 kilo ampere. Um, you can write this as in amperes as well, let's say 560. 0.2 amperes for that. Mm. Any questions up to the arm um, in that question? So I'll probably move on to the DC motors question. That's also most of the most of you find it hard. The DC motor question. Um, so DC motors, um, you'll be given like some information that you can determine the uh, determine certain uh, circuit parameters. Let's say um, you might be given the excited um, the terminal voltage and then the current, and then try to figure out the back EMF. And then you'll be able to, if, if the cha speed changes, 
you need to figure out what happens to the back EMF. Mainly, if the field current remains fixed and the speed reduces, the back EMF reduces, and so on. Um, so the equivalent circuit, um, is a DC motor. Um, so this is the equivalent circuit. And um, this is the armature terminal voltage, and this is the back EMF, EB, um, and the armature resistance, the armature current, and this is the voltage drop across the armature resistance. So you can write Kirchhoff's voltage law to this. This is a DC um, equation, no um, phases. So this voltage, Armage terminal voltage equals the back EMF plus the uh, voltage drop. Uh, that will be IA, RA. And then EB, uh, sorry, the electromechanical power developed by the motor will be E. So I'll write this EB. EB times IA, that's the electromechanical power developed by the motor. And the um, output power will be electromechanical power minus the rotational losses. And EB is proportional to um, the field current. So you can say some field current quantity, and you'll have some external field circuit as well. You'll have the field voltage, the field current. Uh, this is proportional to field current times the rotor speed as well. So usually. Um, normal operation, you keep the field current value constant. So if the speed changes, the back EMF changes proportionately. Um, there's another mode called field weakening where you reduce the field current to achieve higher speeds. Mm, so but, um, having it, that in mind, if you look at question three, uh, it's a separately excited DC motor, runs at uh, 1,512 RPM under no load conditions. Uh, when the field and armature windings of the motor are both fed from a um, 250 voltage source. So that means um, it's running under no load and you are feeling this voltage at this operating condition. The field winding loss and the mechanical rotational loss have been characterized as 111.6 watt and 550.35 uh, watt respectively. And the armature winding draws 2.25 amperes from the supply. Where the motor is uh, loaded mechanically for the same supply conditions, the armature current increases to 20 amperes and the speed droops to a new value. Um, so if we draw the given information on the equivalent circuit, you have um, the no load operating condition. Um, this is being fed by a two, 250 volt voltage source. Um, and this is rotating at uh, 1,512 RPM under no load. Uh, the winding losses and the mechanical losses are given as, um, so the field winding losses, I'll write it as, let's say, P field winding loss is given as 111.6 watt, and the rotational losses here is given as 550.35 watt, and the armature winding draws um, 2.25 amperes from the supply, that's uh, under no load conditions. When the motor is loaded mechanically for the same supply conditions, so this is one operating point, and the other operating point um, is different. Um, you, you have the same supply voltage to 50 volts. Uh, when it's mechanically loaded, the armature current increases to 20 amperes and the speed droops to a new value. So this is a new RPM uh, quantity. Um, part A, determine the field and armature resistances of the motor based on the no load operating conditions. Um, so here you have 
uh, we, we need to find this RA value. So you need to uh, remember that uh, under no load conditions, um, the um, output power is zero. It's not producing, doing any work. The output power is zero. So uh, that's that. And then the this is P out is equal to the electromechanical power developed by the motor minus the rotational losses. And that's equal to zero. So although the output power is zero, uh, the motor is actually producing some electromechanical power to um, keep it going because of the rotational losses. So PEM is equal to rotational losses and in this situation, and that's 550.35 watt. Um, so we have that, and then that allows us to calculate the back EMF under that, that particular operating condition. Um, so we can write this as EB times IA. So EB will be uh, PEM divided by the current, which is 550.35 divided by the current in this, that's 2.25 amperes. So you have 244.6 volts um, under the no load operating condition. So this, we found that as uh, 244.6 volts, and that corresponds to the speed, um, and the field winding is supplied by uh, the same voltage as 250 as well. So now you have EB, you have the current, so then you can apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law to this loop, and then figure out the corresponding resistance. So you have this voltage equals uh, the back EMF plus the voltage drop across the resistance. So the voltage drop across the resistance is the difference between the terminal voltage and the back EMF, which is 250 minus 244.6. So that turns out to be 5.4 volts. So you have the current across the resistance, the voltage drop across the resistance. So then the RA, you can find that uh, the voltage drop, let's say E, sorry, VA minus EB divided by IA. VA minus EB, that's 5.4, and the current is 2.25. So that turns out to be 2.4 ohm. That's the armature resistance. <coughs> um, so that's one answer. And um, we also want to find the field uh, armature field resistance as well. So this says the field and the armature windings of the motor are both fed, fed from um, 250 volts. So the field winding, if you look at the field winding um, losses, that's uh, basically the field winding voltage squared divided by field winding resistance. So field winding resistance is then field winding voltage divided by field winding power loss. So that's 250 squared um, divided by the field winding power loss, which is given as 111.6. So that turns out to be 560 ohm field winding resistance. Um, so moving on to the second part, calculate the motor speed and output mechanical torque produced by the motor when it is mechanically loaded, assuming that the rotation losses scale linearly with speed. So now we are looking at the second operating condition. We've calculated the um, armature resistance. That's We found that as 2.5. 4 ohm. So then uh, we need to find the corresponding um, uh, back EMF for that operating condition. So uh, we can find the voltage drop across the armature resistance. That's uh, the this 
current times the armature resistance, that's 20 times 2.4, gives you uh, 48 uh, volts voltage drop across the armature resistance. So then uh, the back EMF will be this minus the voltage drop here, so that will be 250 minus 48, that gives you 202 um, volts uh, back EMF for the new operating loaded condition. So uh, now you can um, find the corresponding speed uh, for this particular back EMF. So um, we have 244, 244.6 volts back EMF when it's running at um, 1,512 RPM. And when it's running at 202 volts back EMF, what would be the speed? So you scale it linearly, so that's 1512 um, or 2 divided by 244.6 gives you the speed um, under that new condition. So you have 1248.6 RPM, the new speed. Mm. So we need to find the second part of that question, um, calculate the motor speed, so we've done that and the output mechanical torque produced by the motor when it's mechanically loaded. So we need to find the output mechanical torque. So first we'll find the electromechanical power. PEM is the um, uh, back EMF times the current. So the back EMF is 202 and the current is 20 and the power is 222 times 20 gives you 440 what output power, <coughs> um, sorry, electromechanical power. So the output power is the electromechanical power minus the rotational losses. Mind that the rotational losses are not the same um, as before. It scales linearly with speed. Um, so P rotational losses at uh, the new speed scales linearly with speed, so you have um, a rotation loss of 550.35 at a speed of 1512, and we want to find the rotation losses at the new speed. So with speed, it reduces. So you have 450. 4.4 watt um, rotational losses on the new speed. So then uh, you substitute that in the equation, P output power will be this minus the rotation losses, minus uh, 454.4. Four which is 354, uh, sorry. 3585.5 watt. And then we need to find the output mechanical torque. So the torque output will be the power output divided by speed. So that's uh, this particular power, 3585.5 uh, divided by the speed, which is 1248.6. But then we need to convert it to radians per second. That's divided uh, to pi by 60. 